great in America. Youngstown's about halfway between Cleveland and Pittsburgh, which is sort of like saying it's halfway between rust and belt, and I mean that lovingly. From lumber and grain mills and then on to steel mills, Youngstown used to be a place you could make a living wage until the steel industry collapsed. September 19th, 1977, Youngstown Sheet and Tube announced it would lay off 5,000 workers. Since then, since Youngstown, Ohio's Black Monday, the city's gone from being a place that thrived on making things to a place marked by an amazing determination to stick it out, to try to bounce back from the worst. Youngstown is putting in bike racks downtown now, cool ones. These pictures are from a blog called I Will Shout Youngstown. Youngstown celebrates when a landlord manages to rent out a building downtown. Youngstown wants to live. But Youngstown's hard times are getting harder. This report today from Brookings talks about Youngstown's 19 census tracts that are listed as poverty in extreme. And if you are Youngstown's congressman, you are charged with going to Washington, D.C. and pleading Youngstown's case, screaming it into the wind if you have to. Youngstown's congressman is a Democrat named Tim Ryan. Listen to him here uh, on the House floor. He's sort of brilliant here, and it's worth hearing. But while you are listening to him, check out what you can see in this clip as well. Look around him at who he is saying this to. I know many of us have been talking about this for a long, long time uh, to where we've had 30 years of stagnant wages in the United States. And there is no way that we're going to be able to continue to be uh, the leader of the free world or really even have the kind of country that we want if we have this kind of level of inequality. And there are issues that come before the House of Representatives. There are issues that the president is continuing to push that will help rectify this problem that is not getting any attention at all in the House of Representatives. And one final point. You're starting to see it percolate. You know, you saw it in Wisconsin. The coalition in Ohio now against this issue, too, is incredible. Police, fire, teachers, public employees, building trades, auto workers, machinists, average people all coming together to say, this is the middle class. And we've had it up to here. And Occupy Wall Street, same thing, in income inequality. The congressman from Youngstown, look, pleading Youngstown's case, the case to deal with American incomes falling off a cliff if you're not in the 1%, and he's making that, this is to whom he was speaking, he's making that case to an empty room. So he is both explicitly making that point, and he is implicitly making that point that nobody is paying attention to the economic catastrophe that has been wrought in a place like Youngstown. It may be that not enough of D.C. is paying attention, but these very ordinary folks who are part of Occupy Youngstown are paying attention. This is a photo from Occupy Youngstown's General Assembly. Ordinary workaday working Americans who say they've had enough of an economy and a political system that only works for the rich. These are Occupy Youngstown's tents outside a bank, an implicit demand made by physical presence that we ought to expect more out of our systems than that they just take great care of the banks. Looking at their photos today on Facebook, I think this is the sort of anonymous edge of Occupy Youngstown. And here are some Youngstown occupiers who are old enough to remember when the mills sent everybody home and the economic destruction began. Joining